Welcome to part three of Stripe payments with Angular and Firebase. In the last two episodes, we integrated Stripe checkout and charged the card with Firebase cloud functions. In this third episode, we're going to use that charge to enable the user to purchase digital content in our app. In this example, we keep a balance on the user's account, which can be increased by making payments or decreased by purchasing content. When a user has sufficient funds on their account, they can click a button that will bring up a modal window to confirm or cancel the purchase. If they click confirm, their account balance is automatically updated with the new balance. The database will be updated with a purchases collection, which tracks the user ID and the item IDs that they've purchased. The user's current balance will be tracked on their actual account with a new property called balance, which takes a number. Let's start by updating the cloud function. We need it to update both the charge as well as the user's balance in the same operation. We want it to be atomic, meaning if the charge fails, the user balance update will fail also, and vice versa. The first step is to create a balance variable that defaults to zero, and then when we get the customer record, we'll update it with their existing balance. When we get the Stripe charge back, we'll first check to make sure it exists, and we'll also check to make sure that it's actually paid. If these conditions are met, we create an object where the key is a reference point in the database and the value is the data we want to update. This allows us to update multiple database locations at the same time. But be careful, it performs a set operation, so make sure you point to the very deepest node that you want to update. Now we can use the charge amount from Stripe to increase the user's balance and then send these updates together to the root of the database. Back in the app, we can see the user's balance is updated by the cloud function when they make a payment. Now we need to update the service to handle the payment process. In order to get the user balance, we first need the auth user ID. So we'll use the switch map operator on the Angular Fire auth observable. We'll move this out into its own function and then subscribe to it in the constructor. The balance itself will be emitted as an object, so we just want to map that object to its actual value, so we just get a number back in the observable. From there, we need to determine if a user has already purchased a product, which we can do by seeing if that key exists under their purchases in the database. This will also return an observable, and we'll map it to a Boolean value to get the true-false value back instead of the entire object itself. And the last step is to create a function that enables the user to actually make the purchase. It requires the unique ID of the item being purchased, as well as the amount. And it records the timestamp from the Firebase server. This will guarantee your timestamps are consistent, which would not be the case if you just used the JavaScript date object. This function also needs to make an atomic update to update the balance, as well as the purchase history in the same operation. So we'll create another updates object and pass it the corresponding data. The user balance gets decreased by the amount of the purchase and the purchase history gets the purchase object. We can then pass these updates to the root of the database and call the update function. Now let's create a new component called the buy now component. It's designed to be reusable, so we'll take the buyable ID as well as the amount from the parent component. The buyable ID just represents any item that can be purchased. We also create a variable to toggle the visibility of the modal. During ng on init, we define the variables for the user balance observable and the has purchased observable. Then we create an event handler to change the visibility of the modal. And the last function we need is for the user to actually confirm the purchase. So this will just run the buy digital content function that we defined in the service. When the purchase is complete, we close the modal, and you could also consider adding a success message or a confirmation at this point. But before we get into the HTML, we're going to create a custom Stripe pipe to format the currency amounts. This is strictly for the user, and it will turn the value into a string with the proper decimal amount. Stripe amounts are 1 one hundredth of the underlying currency, so 500 in Stripe equals 5 US dollars. From a parent component, we pass the unique ID as well as the price to the buy now component. In the component itself, we add the isActive class when the show modal variable is true. This is specific to Bulma CSS. We can unwrap the balance observable to see if the user has sufficient funds on their account to make the purchase. 
If so, we'll show them the confirm or cancel buttons. We can also show the user what their current balance is and what their balance will look like after the purchase. The confirm button will actually make the purchase and the cancel button will just toggle the modal back to false. If the user doesn't have enough money, we'll show different modal content that says insufficient funds with their current balance. The last step is to create a button that will open the modal in the first place. If the user's already purchased the item, then we'll go ahead and just show a button that says already purchased that's disabled. Notice how we always unwrap the observables in parentheses using the async pipe and then call any logic outside those parentheses. Before we start using the system, let's also add some backend data security rules on Firebase. When a purchase is made, we want to make sure that user ID always matches the current auth user ID. And we also want to prevent purchases from being updated or deleted after they've been created. So if the data exists, then we won't allow any write operations to take place. Now going back to the app, we can take a look and make sure that everything is working as expected. I currently have $5 on my account, which is insufficient to buy this product. So we'll add additional credits through Stripe, which should increase the account balance from $5 to $25. And we'll see the account balance here update asynchronously once it's done processing in Stripe. And now we have sufficient funds on the account, so we should be able to go ahead and buy the product. That pulls up the confirmation screen. If we click confirm, it should reduce the balance by $20, which it does. So now we're back at $5 again, and we have access to the product. That's it for Stripe Payments. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want a free copy of that book, The Angular Firebase Survival Guide, consider becoming a pro member for just nine bucks a month. You'll get a free copy of that book, as well as access to our pro channel on Slack for one-on-one -on -one project consulting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.